Tonight, joining forces, the new naval base deal between Australia and the US. The so-called trolley man from the Burke Street terror attack faces burglary charges. The search for dangerous explosives missing off a major Sydney highway. And the Knights players swapping the field for a drive-through for the day. This is NBN News with Tyson Cottrell. Good evening. The Prime Minister has entered a battle between China and America, agreeing to a joint partnership for a former naval base on Manus Island. US Vice President Mike Pence today announced the deal at the APEC summit. Australia now awaiting a reaction from its biggest trading partner. The Prime Minister greeted with a song. Pacific leaders, but landing in the middle of a clash between two superpowers, America and China. We have great respect for President Xi and great respect for China. But, in the President's words, China's taken advantage of the United States for many, many years. And those days are over. Amid tension over trade and power on our doorstep, US Vice President Mike Pence declared America would not blink first. The United States, though, will not change course until China changes its ways. Instead, the Americans will delve deeper in the region to slow what they believe is China's rising influence in the South Pacific. The United States will partner with Papua New Guinea and Australia on their joint initiative at Lombrum Naval Base on Manus Island. Last month, amid concerns China was pushing further south through militarization and a trillion dollar infrastructure program, Prime Minister Morrison signed a deal with Papua New Guinea to discuss developing the former World War II base that was once home to 37,000 U.S. troops. And it could once again be a strategic defence facility. All the details uh, we'll be working through in, in the time ahead. The Vice President's announcement was conveniently made just before a bilateral meeting with Prime Minister Morrison. In his first major international speech as Prime Minister, Mr Morrison hinted Australia wanted to play a greater role in the region. We see ourselves as part of a family in the Pacific. Prime Minister Morrison had declared Australia would not take sides in the bitter feud between the United States and China. But in agreeing to a joint venture with the US at a former naval base north of our borders, it would be hard to argue that Australia is still in the middle. It's a move that could also anger China, Australia's major trading partner. But the US is sending a message loud and clear. We take a decisive action to address our trade imbalance with China. Reporter Jonathan Kersley is in Port Moresby tonight. He filed this report a short time ago as the government looks at other ways to combat China. It's not just about the military, but also about the economy. Australia, the US and Japan have announced they've signed a trilateral agreement teaming up to counter China's economic muscle in the region. China had been providing smaller Pacific Island nations with loans for infrastructure, things like roads, ports and buildings. But the US described that program as bad debt diplomacy and warned that some of those Pacific Island nations were facing unsustainable debts. Now, those nations have an option from the West, and with the big nations like the US and China slugging it out politically, it's the smaller Pacific Island nations that are most likely to emerge from all of this as the big winner. Jonathan Kersley there. It's not often the bomb, riot and dog squad are all called in to respond to a crash. But a large-scale response was warranted today after a four-wheel drive carrying explosives was rear-ended on a major Sydney motorway, scattering the dangerous cargo for metres. The crumpled minibus carrying cheerleaders from Canberra to a competition in Sydney. They were on the M7 at Cecil Hills when it ran up the back of this four-wheel drive. Behind the wheel, a rail maintenance worker carrying explosive rail detonators. 48 were flung from his vehicle when it was hit, scattering across the highway and into long grass. And while 45 were located pretty quickly, police spent hours trying to find the remaining three, calling in the dog squad, metal detectors and the ride squad to conduct a line search. Rail detonators are coin-sized devices used as a warning signal for train drivers. When the wheels of the train go over them, they explode. 
and while they won't go off on their own in the wrong hands, they're dangerous. It was slow going here on the M7 for several hours as the search for those missing detonators continued. Police are still investigating exactly what caused the crash, but what we know is the four-wheel drive slowed here this morning, and for some reason the minibus behind us didn't stop. As the girls phoned home to tell their parents what had happened, the man driving them spoke with police. Incredibly, no one was injured. The three missing detonators are yet to be found. Sophie Walsh, NBN News. A surfer has been airlifted to, to a hospital in Sydney after he was bitten by a shark on a popular beach near Kayama. He's been treated for deep wounds to his right calf and hand after he was attacked just after lunchtime. When anyone sustains an open wound, there is a risk of infection and that's part of the treatment process by paramedics and by doctors and nurses at the hospital who will clean that wound and ensure that, uh, ensure that the risk of infection remains low. The injuries are not life-threatening and the victim is in a stable condition. There's been another loss in the Hunter's media market with homegrown wedding magazine White calling it quits. The publication says it's no longer financially viable after several advertisers bowed out over their opposition to same-sex marriage. When beliefs and business cross paths. It's just come to a point where there's just a clash against us and against culture. And hurting people isn't part of what we want to do. Newcastle owned and produced White Magazine launched in 2007 to fill a void in the bridal industry. But their crusade was their eventual downfall. When the plebiscite happened, everybody was putting up their support of the campaign supporting same-sex marriage and we started getting messages saying you're the only magazine in Australia that's not showing your support like come on guys jump on board move forward with 2018 but then there was always something that just stopped us because we just didn't want to enter into that conversation that wasn't a loving conversation despite the backlash the magazine's editors have defended their values a decision that sent couples and advertisers walking down a different aisle. That we stand for love and his love for all people. If there's some way that we can bring a message of love, uh, then it was worth it. Stephen Mount, NBN News. The race that stops Cessnock is just one sleep away from the starting grid as preparations for the Australian post Grand Prix ramp up. Teams and officials spent the day testing bikes to ensure all entries were within the 6.5 horsepower limit. If someone's gone over the horsepower limit, they get one chance to take their bike away and bring it back legal. Other than that, they're out. A crowd of 10,000 is expected to watch this year's event. Breast cancer can be a devastating illness, but one local charity is doing all it can to make things easier. Now in its fourth year, Tubes for Boobs takes its fundraiser to the waves, hoping to double its numbers in the coming years. With straps on their ankles and one on each shoulder, these surfers looked a little different to Bar Beach's typical board riders. Hanging 10 for the one in eight women who will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Six years ago, Courtney Bauer's mother was diagnosed. That inspired me to want to fundraise and help raise awareness. Now, Tubes for Boobs is one of Newcastle's biggest success stories. Since it started just three years ago, Tubes for Boobs has raised more than $70,000. With heats going all day, there's one standout event which is pulling in the crowds. We've got seven teams of four each today and they wear a bra, go in, surf two waves, come back and then they have to switch bras with the next competitor and just take turns surfing. Anyone who could stand up on a surfboard and ride a break was welcome along, all for a very important cause. And there were some great perks for those getting their feet wet. Everyone can fundraise and um, highest fundraiser gets a uh, free board and a few other prizes as well. When we're not down here windmill tiles, we're just a day having fun. Lauren Kemp, NBN News. It struggled to make ends meet for years, but things are starting to look up for one of Newcastle's most beloved watering holes. Carrington Bowling Club today received almost $11,000 in donations towards complete solar power. The funds come from Climate Action Newcastle, the community and the state government. 
Ten years ago, we were 300,000 in debt and didn't look like the club would survive. But as the time's gone on, we've clawed back. We're now up to our fourth year of profit in a row. Ahead in the news, Melbourne's so-called trolley man faces robbery charges.